it's like the thing in the second one. That's it? Yeah. Just take a leave you alone. Right, like right up there. Like right up there. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call to order our Newton County Board of Education January 15, 2019 meeting. Uh, may you bow your ears for a moment of silence, please. Thank you, may we stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God and earth, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Fear, we have any special recognition? Um, no, Mr. Turner, not this evening. Any public participation? No, sir. Okay, I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. So motion by Mr. Johnson, it's second by Ms. Coggins. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, <coughs> motion carries. Need a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion by Ms. Coggins. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussions or concerns? Having none, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. Superintendent's report. Good evening. Good evening. In the financial report, <clears throat> the school system East Plus 4 distribution for November was $1,082,614, which was a decrease of $130,782 from last month's collection. The average for the first 46 months of East Plus 4 collections uh, were $956,051. The monthly average for East Plus 3 was $881,483. The title ad valorem Collection for November was $51,250, and expenditures are within budget at 48.86% expended with 50% of the year complete. And that concludes the financial report. Thank you. Adam B. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. As you can see, we have a bevy of things uh, listed here, but uh, in the interest of brevity i'm just going to highlight just a few this evening the book bus joined the chamber of commerce on the square for the after school christmas parade party community members were able to come to hear how the grinch stole christmas take a picture with a grinch and props make a craft make a guess for the estimation draw and select books from the bus and that is under our student achievement and success under high quality workforce at the December 12, 2018 Leadership POC, the Director of Human Resources reviewed the district's upbeat survey results with principals and district leaders. The survey was administered in October 2018 to over 1,200 teachers with a participation rate of 85%. Under culture, climate, and communication, on Friday, December 7th, 2018, district personnel offered a neighbor and navigator goal setting opportunity to the cohort one members. During this time, families had an opportunity to set goals for life enhancements. The sessions were led by Ms. Kim Reed and Mr. Naron Butler. This support will help families with their life enhancement goals. And finally, under organizational and operational effectiveness, RISE Academy hosted an awards day ceremony to recognize high performing students from first semester. Students and families were treated to refreshments after the ceremony. Awards were given in the areas of attendance, academics, and highest number of PBIS reward points. That concludes um, that portion of the superintendent's report. I'll now go to the enrollment report. Um, as of 
January, we have 19,638 students, and that is an increase of 138 students over this time last year. Thank you. You're welcome. Item D, have a presentation. I think you read the last year. Just want, want Mr. Roundtree, could you clarify um, what the enrollment report states? Oh, sorry. Uh, you all know this is the one that always gives me. I got it right for two months, and now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Fury. Um, the actually, we have 19,776 students at this time, which is an increase of 138 students over this time last year. Sorry about that. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Item two, in uh -huh. organization and operational effectiveness. Yes, sir. I guess Mr. Uh, Carl would. Item two, instituted Item two. a new transportation inspection program, pre-trip and post-trip. I'm sorry, Mr. where are you now? Mr. Barr? Mr. Barr. Oh, Dr. Barr. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You, you're implementing a revised pre and post trip <coughs> program. Would that increase the amount of time that the drive was going to take? It did not. To, no, did sir. Not? It was within that same time frame. It was really a revision of the form to make sure it was in complete compliance with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's guidelines. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Prior to the presentation, I would like to provide you with a brief overview regarding the work that took place prior to standing before you this evening. Georgia Standards of Excellence places emphasis on problem solving, reasoning, representation, connections, as well as communication. These standards are more relevant in the, to the real world, which provides students the knowledge and skills needed for college and career readiness. I'm sorry, college and career success. However, historically, Georgia's math scores reflect the students across the nation are experiencing challenges with mastering these standards. Not only is this reflective in Georgia's data, it is also reflective in our secondary math data here in, in Newton County Schools. As a district and school level, level team, we knew that we had to do something to assist our students with mastering math standards. We met with administration, our math content specialists, as well as our math content leaders to explore ways we can support our learners. From the district level, we immediately added district level um, learning guides, a math canvas page, as well as a weekly math vlog to support our students with mastering those math standards. However, we wanted to ensure that our support extended beyond the walls of the traditional classroom during that one hour math block time. We had a goal to provide students with additional support 24 hours a day, seven days a week from a certified teacher. Therefore, students could receive support during the school day, as well as during non-credit bearing hours, after school, as well as in the home. One of the options that we explored was FEV Tutor. FEV Tutor provides students with a 24-7 virtual tutorial experience that is personalized to meet the needs of the student. Through FEV Tutor, students can receive support anytime, any place, where the tutorial is blended into the school day program in an after school setting or extended to the home or nights on the weekend. FEV Tutor provides that two tutorial models of support, targeted instruction as well as on-demand homework help, which they will share with you in their presentation. Prior to implementing the program across the district, there were two schools that were selected to participate in a six-week pilot to gauge the effectiveness of the program. 
<laughs> schools were selected after reviewing program offerings, benchmark scores, as well as milestone results. Clements Middle School was selected for targeted instruction, the targeted instructional model, and the Newton College and Career Academy, they were selected for the homework help model. After the six-week six pilot, we found that it was successful based upon the student, administration, and teacher feedback, benchmark results for the high school, and the progress monitoring instrument with FEV Tutor. At this time, FEV Tutor will share about their virtual tutorial resource, and we have principals from both Clements as well as the Career Academy here, and they will share about their experience. Thank you very much. Um, some of you already know, I am Leslie Kent. I am the academic success coach with FEV Tutor uh, for here in Georgia. <laughs> I am with Gerald Bryant. Um, he is our regional account executive for Georgia. So for our team here, we're kind of who you see. We're the ones visiting the schools, interacting with teachers and district officials to make sure we do the best possible program. Um, I'm gonna give you a good overview of just who we are but I think it'll be important to hear from the actual principals on how the program was successful or how they liked it. So just to give you an idea of how we work and just an overview of what we do. So quick little agenda. Nope, it's gonna turn out. Um, who we are, who we work with, pilot results. Um, there is a live demo option and depending on time, um, if you would like to see how it works, I will be here the entire time. So what I can do for you is I will be here and afterwards I can show you how it works so we're not eating up a lot of the time. But if you want to see how the actual platform um, works, I do have a tutor on standby to show you that piece. So we do have that available as well. And then questions, of course. For FEV Tutor, our mission is to really provide data-driven, highly targeted, that one-on-one -on -one instruction. I myself was a classroom teacher at a Title I school for five years. So a lot of this piece and anyone who's been in education, as everyone in this room has, one-on-one -on -one instruction is really the goal. That's when you see the growth, that's when you see the change. So to be able to provide that on a large scale to a lot of students was the goal with FEV. Everything we do is data-driven, it's targeted, we want it to be as specialized and as individualized as possible, uh, just like you'd get with a tutor in your home. <coughs> Our work with Georgia, we're in many, oops, sorry. We're in many of the school districts, Atlanta, public schools, Henry County, nope, it's gonna keep doing that, uh, Fulton and Cobb, and we are obviously just starting into Cab as well. For, oh, it's got the diamonds. Yep, on it's it gonna again. keep on going. <laughs> um, we are driven by data, so everything you see I'm gonna just do this and pause it. Everything you see, oh, nope. <laughs> this is gonna be fun for us. You have to take the timing off of Yeah. You have it in play mode? I do not. I don't it's know if it's gonna go into the, the go, go back into the other screen. Um, there we go. Are you able to go to the? I'm gonna take that off. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Thank y'all, sorry. Um, so we are driven by data. So all of the goals with everything we set up is using data. So as we did with Clements and a few other ones, we wanna use the data that the schools are already using. So all these students are taking multiple tests, whether it's the map test, star test, things they do in class, unit instruction. We wanna be able to use that to create instruction. We don't need to have them testing every day on different platforms. So it's integrated with Georgia Milestones. Um, we have partnerships with different uh, <coughs> providers of test-based Georgia Milestone-based questions where we get all of our lesson planning from. Um, and then all of this is incorporated with teacher feedback, district feedback, uh, administrative feedback on how we can make adjustments to better suit their classroom um, or at a district level. So everything, any kind of assessment we take or use um, is gonna be incorporated into the students 
individualized plan. And that can be student by student, that can be class by class, district by district. It's really however you would best like to set that up. Um, so the big difference with a lot of other programs is that we have a very collaborative process. So ac your academic success coach, which is myself, um, our goal and our role in this whole piece is to really be that in-between person between the tutors and the districts and the teachers in the classroom. So whether that is sitting down with teachers and saying, here's the issues in my classroom or here's the goals I want to reach, here, what are the best ways to do that? And we can help collaborate on best practices, what we've seen successful at other schools, um, how this student might need a different plan than the other student. This is include data sharing, so anything can be sent to me so I can send it on to our tutoring team so they can make the best plans. Analysis, professional development, all of that's included in there where I go to schools, show teachers how to use the program, do parent night so parents know what's going on. My role is to be as available to the district or the school as possible to make sure that everyone understands how this can be used to the best ability of those individuals. Another big important piece um, that we want to emphasize nope, is our family and student engagement team. Um, this piece is something we do a lot of work with virtual schools and students who are working from home lot <laughs> often. And our big concern is how can we engage those families and students who might be splitting their time between you know, schools and other classes, maybe they're in dual enrollment classes, things like that, where they're not always in a classroom with a teacher. The family and student engagement team was our solution to this. So it is a team of people at our offices who reach out via text, phone calls, emails, to help with scheduling, to help with, hey, my student was working with a tutor um, last week that we loved, can we have them back this week? We had someone different. They can make those changes for you. Calling, say, you know, we're not gonna make it tonight, that's fine. Um, they're just that 24 seven contact person that can help you with scheduling, changing, anything like that, any feedback. So parents can feel just as involved as opposed to having to go through teachers and things like that. Um, with that scheduling piece, um, we've created a Newton at fevtutor.com email address, so that's just for Newton County, so that way we know how to streamline all of that for Newton specific request. Um, that way our support team receives that and say, <laughs> we, will we know for Newton to schedule these things or do it this way, and that way it just makes it a little more personalized for this district. Um, the same things that happen with anything else, parents can receive progress reports through them, um, just like teachers would be able to, um, reminders of sessions, anything like that. So it's just supposed to be that other piece that kind of alleviates the pressure from the teachers or the schools to help give them that support. We can be the people to make those calls and remind them, hey, you have a session, or last week you did, you know, this was your score that you got in class, so let's maybe circle back to that same standard. Um, and we handle all of that piece. Pilot results. So, um, as Dr. Warfield mentioned, we worked with two different schools. It was not fast enough. We worked with two different schools on a pilot um, using our two different programs. One was targeted model, and that was at Clements Middle School. So we had a set student. I had set students working in the classroom. So the first 45 minutes of their class time was instruction from the teacher. The last 45 minutes, they were meeting with their tutor. Um, with that structured time, they met with a tutor two to three times a week. They do A day, B day, so it was a little different depending on the week, um, over the six week period. <coughs> they provided, the school provided a pre and post test. So the overall growth for the, the pre to post test across the board was 10%. That was a school provided test. So they gave the pre test and the post test. Um, and then Newton College and Career, they did the on-demand sessions where they were just used as a homework help option. So they would reach out, the student reached out and said, you know, I need help with this or can I schedule a session for that? So those were their two models that we worked with. Um, the average exit ticket graph that you're seeing up there, at the end of each session, FEV, the tutor provides a exit ticket slip that the student takes as our way to get a small formative assessment at the end of the session. It's, three to five questions just so we can see how well they grasp that session. 
Um, so our formative assessments is a data that we can use each time they log in to track progress. Also a great way of feedback for teachers and parents to see how that session went. Um, so the average exit ticket broken down by grade at the end of the six week program. I'm actually going to ask, um, if that is okay, uh, Principal Richard, who obviously <laughs> is at Clements Middle School, um, to maybe provide a little bit more feedback of what he thought worked well for the pilot, what he didn't, um, and give you a little more insight on how that program went. And I'll also add in your folders that you received, there's a program report. Um, the front of that program report will give you a little bit more in-depth data on the Clements. Um, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. You will receive a folder momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> Timing's off. Um, the front of that, the main thing is the program report. And that's going to be the Newton County pilot program report, which will probably mean the most to you. Um, there's some data on there that breaks down the growth at Clements Middle School by grade. So you can kind of see, you know, eighth grade, sixth grade breakdown growth, seventh grade and eighth grade breakdown growth from the pre to post test. Um, so the average was at 10%, where sixth grade, I believe, had the largest jump um, of about 15% overall, and eighth grade was that seven or 8%. Um, but overall, there was a really strong, and we had that consistency. Mr. Moore and Principal Richards did a great job of kind of having that consistency with the students. They showed up, or we kind of say our sweet spot is that 10 session. We see that real growth, and we had a lot of the students get close to that 10 session mark. Um, it was usually about 8 to 10 just with the time frame. Uh, but we were able to see great growth at Clements with that targeted model. Um, the other model, and uh, Dr. Daniels, I think Mr. Walker is here as well, perfect. Um, if you don't mind just talking to your experience as well with the on-demand sessions. Well, let me first jump back just for a second to good morning or good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, the, the beauty of FEB for us was that they came in to us and listened to what we needed. They set up a blueprint meeting and they, they, they came in and said, okay, how do you want to do it? So they listened to us and then executed. Say about uh, that they didn't tell us what we had to do or they didn't try to force something on us. They listened to what we our needs were and then developed a plan with us to make it happen. And that was really very special because a lot of times it's canned and it only can work this way. This was not a canned and you could make it flexible and work the way it was for your school. Uh, for us, we were allowed to enroll um, a small pilot group. And they had the flexibility. They came in and trained them about how to set up uh, tutors and, and schedule their tutoring. Uh, it just gave those kids the flexibility. So when they got home, if they got stuck, hey, I could go on here and I could ask my question. And that's the amazing part of it. And that's what the, our kids liked was if I did get stuck on homework and my mom or dad couldn't answer it, I could have somebody that I could go right then, log on, and there was somebody there to answer. Dr. Jamie, do you want to add anything? Good evening, everyone. Um, the group very strategic and piloted is the, the, um, our students who are enrolled in accelerated um, geometry, algebra two. Um, that's an accelerated course, so they, they're basically doing a year and a half of mathematics in one year on a block schedule. So the days where they're not able to see their teachers because it's an AV um, block, 
that day, they are, can actually schedule a tutor to assist with the material that was done the prior day because they do not see them have to just pay <laughs> So that is an added bonus in that um, if, they're not, if, if they're not with the teacher at that particular time, they can schedule a tutor to get um, teaching remediation on any skill or any standard that was not mastered the prior day or the day that they were in that class. So that's an added bonus as well. Thank you all very much. Um, and that's kind of our goal is students can really take ownership for their own learning in this and really kind of say, I just need help this one night and get on and request an on demand. Or as you, you heard, they can get on and say, I want to meet with the tutor every Wednesday at 6 because I don't have a math teacher that day. And that's their session for however long they need it. Um, a little bit of feedback from, so at the end of each of our sessions as well, we give students an opportunity to give us feedback. They can rate their sessions and their tutors out of five stars. Um, as well as adding in commentary. Uh, and it, there's a long list of commentary in your program reports if you want to read through. And as I think the district people who have been working with Dr. Warfield, Dr. Everett, they're very honest in their feedback, students are. Um, so this is just a little bit. Uh, we kind of want to show overall our ratings. You can see that out of close to 300 ratings, 205 were five stars. Um, and then for anything really three stars and below, we have a QN, a quality assurance team. They pull those sessions. All the sessions are recorded. All the chat scripts are recorded. So we can pull that data and say what went wrong. Was it, you know, they didn't like their tutor? Was it they were having an off day? Was it the material was too hard? So we get into those sessions and really see what was it they didn't like so we can fix it moving forward. Um, so anything below a four star is our quality assurance team goes in and checks that out. Um, to make sure it's not something we can't easily fix or talk to the teacher to see how we can make better going forward. I have a live demo scheduled, but again, in the for time purposes, I will say I have it available to me. I am here. I will be here at the end. So if you would like to see the platform, I'd happily show it to you, um, but I don't want to take up all of your time. Um, at the end, if you have any questions for me about the platform, um, about logistics, um, I am here, so I'm going to pause it because it's getting ahead. But <laughs> any questions or concerns or just how the program works in itself? I do have one. Uh, yes. Yeah. The average growth you saw at Clements was 10%. Mm -hmm. what, what is the average growth you normally see? So normally if we see, we kind of say depending on what we're looking at, data-wise, if a student attends <laughs> at least 10 sessions, we see usually, and we kind of say overall achievement gain of, I don't want to say a grade level, but a whole bump. So whether it's 10% growth, our bubble students is who we often say is our biggest jump, because that way you can really see that one to twos if we're talking milestones, three to fours. So 10 to 15 sessions is when we tend to see the most growth. Um, for data like that, you can see 10 to 15% on average if they're doing 10 to 15 sessions. Um, so it just depends on the data we're looking at. Uh, for we were in line. Yes, so y'all were, were right in line, and like I said, with that structured, targeted tutoring session, <coughs> like with anything else, when you have structure for students, you're really going to see that kind of um, growth quickly. And we were able to at Clements, it was very exciting. To see the screen anymore? Oh, or? yes. No, I, I don't. I have some questions. Can we put the lights back on, please? <laughs> Thank you. And the board members have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, so, and, and my question is actually, I'm not sure who's going to answer because sure. some of the questions actually may be for you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Morfield. Um, so one of the questions I have um, in your presentation, you yes. said the district can set it up how they would like to, mm -hmm. and as far as it being data-driven, individualized class or school, mm -hmm. um, how will ours be set up? How was the pilot set up and how will ours? Sure, well I can give you kind of brief. So we do everything by packages of hours. So we determine how many hours we're able to purchase or have for each school. So for the pilot program, we had a thousand hours that we were using between the two schools. Um, we had a pretty good gauge of what Clements would do because we had it structured. Um, Newton was kind of, you know, here's your pocket, use it until it's gone uh, structure. So those are, we do everything by hours. So 
what we've talked about, and Dr. Warfield can correct me, is we will be giving each school, based on a algorithm she has come up with, each school a certain pocket of hours, and then it's up to the principal, okay, I have X many hours, Where am I, where's the need? Um, and then we would go in and say, here's your 500 hours, who are the students we want to target, how do you want it to be targeted, and that way it kind of gives the principal the opportunity to have the need focused on at their school. Okay, so my next question actually that I typed is geared on that. Yes. So how many sessions per student? With that, what you're saying that mm -hmm. the hours would go to the school. Sure. Then are the hours broken down by student or do the student, is it open-ended for the students? Can it be done that way? I'm it can be, of, absolutely. Of, you know, just a yeah. hy hypothetical situation where a student would use a whole bunch of hours <laughs> and use up so the school hours. The, sh I mean, the shortest grids is you can cap hours per student if okay. that is a concern. If we're like, this student's gonna get on there every night, we can do a, a capping of hours, as well as the other one where if we're doing, depending on the model, like where uh, Newton, we had kind of an open, let's see who takes it, and we just said we'd monitor it. So if one student was, like you said, tracking away where they were gonna use all of it, we could make a cap or create a schedule for them. Um, a lot of times with the targeted model, that's not as much of a concern, obviously, because we know they're going to be on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 3 to 4. Uh, but we do have some situations where we create caps per student if that is a concern and say, let's, once they hit 10, we'll take a step back and see how many hours are remaining. So we can be very flexible per student or per school how we want to track that. So another question on the hours, because it seemed like it, yeah. I mean the hours are right really basically how is up. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question on the hours are the sessions that are missed because I noticed in the report mm -hmm. it was um, hours used 488 hours available 512. But you mm -hmm. talked about um, scheduling sessions. Some people have scheduled sessions mm -hmm. and they miss those sessions. The missed sessions, do they count in no. those hours? They don't count. So we okay. only track hours that are used, and that goes to the minutes. So if you have a 45-minute session, mm -hmm. you're only going to be pulled 45 minutes. So if they go 45 minutes twice a week, that's an hour and a half. You're not pulled for two one-hour sessions. So we count it to the minute. And with absentees, that's the same way. If we pulled an hour every time a student missed their session, you know. it, they'd be gone quick. Okay. So those are, don't count again. So we only want the hours that are purchased used for active tutoring. And then do the schools have to choose between homework helpline and the instructional model or is open-ended? You can so do you any can. combination you would like to do. If you have 30 students who want a very targeted plan and you, that's not going to be all your hours so you leave the rest for homework help, there can be any kind of blended model <coughs> that works best for your school. Okay. So then my next question, I know this question definitely is not for you, so thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. This is going to be for Dr. Warfield. <laughs> students that don't or um, Dr. Everett, for your team. Um, students that don't have access to phone lines for homework helpline um, but can use the help, is there a plan in place for those students? Yes, we've had an opportunity to speak with administrators in reference to that. That's what Ms. Kent was talking about, the blended model. Okay. So they'll have the opportunity to either have in-class instruction that's associated with FEV tutor. They can do it during non-instructional hours, which could be possibly during high school, maybe your academics time. Okay. We've also spoken with Ms. Sams, who's also, we're going to implement this in our after school school program so it will be available <laughs> and then students have the opportunity if they have <coughs> access to that as well at home they have it for the homework assistance at the home okay any other questions <coughs> I, I have one oh, but yeah. i'm trying to how to say it I'm sure. Um, I'm just thinking forward. Um, so, say for instance, this is a student say takes algebra <coughs> classes and used it, and it was very successful. Mm -hmm. And then say next year, um, they move to another class that may not be targeted. We, the school system, may not, their principal may not choose their particular class to to use this. Um, would this be an? But the parents and the student feel it's a it worked great for this particular student. Is there an option where the parent could? purchase we do tutor, have, so we have a handful of like private students who mm -hmm. just do similar to that situation we've okay. used it in the past we loved it can we get on board you know you might not be at the same rate as a district purchase but right but yes we do have some private so that is an option we do have um, families who have done that in the past it's right. just a smaller pocket but yes yeah that I is, just, you know I could see like my son for instance this being right. very successful and then 
him needing it Absolutely. moving forward. And, and Absolutely. So we do have that. And again, with our work with virtual schools, that's what happens with a lot of students. Like I worked with you all through middle school. I'm right. just going to purchase some hours for myself to keep going through high school. So yes, we do have that option as well. Go ahead. Is, is the business model built strictly on per hour sales or do you you don't have an unlimited all-you-can-eat plan. A bit more. <laughs> that's that what I was going to say. Now we're getting to Gerald's territory. Um, I, mean, I, I don't want to somebody's commission, but I just was curious. <laughs> on. No, as, as far as it's all our packages and that a lot of that plays into how, as it, from an academic standpoint, how I can plan successful programs. I know I have 500 hours. Let's focus on, on what we need. If that is an option, this is the guy to talk to about that. <laughs> he would be the one to play that out. But so ours, because we normally run school year to school year each contract so depending how that contract looks or how you want to expand throughout the district it would all depend on that pocket of hours that we're planning on working with so the pilot did you want to follow and, also, also roll over hours. and excuse me yes and that is why i have him roll here. over hours roll over hours so let's say we were in a situation where we did you know have let's get all these hours for the school year and then we get to the end and for whatever reason I know one of our other schools, their one-to-one -one technology fell through at the end and things happen. Mm -hmm. So we had a thousand or so leftover hours at the end of the school year. We can roll those over into the next school year and kind of get the ball rolling quickly while we decide on what we'll need for the remaining of the mm -hmm. school year. So you won't lose those hours at the end just because they were unused. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about having hours left over. <laughs> so I guess what, I, what I'm getting at is if we did a thousand or we bought a thousand, however it works, yes. we had a thousand hours mm -hmm. for the pilot program and what was it six weeks mm -hmm. and that was just a couple of classes mm -hmm. and we're looking at purchasing six thousand hours we're purchasing six thousand and they're going to okay. give you support us so i'm just i'm looking at the, it doesn't look like a lot of we're not <laughs> it's a great product and then you're gonna, we're going to see some results and we don't want to you know blink at that but is it it seems kind of it will depend on, I think, program by program. Um, so, for example, the traditionally speaking, your targeted programs, you can kind of bank on those hours, how it's going to be structured. So if I know the school has 500 hours and our goal is to get to the milestone test, we're going to plan it in a way that you're using it from February to April with the milestones in mind. And I'm not going to schedule it in a way that's like, sorry, you're going to be out of your hours come March. Mm -hmm. You know, So it is very purposeful. And those are those targeted plans where we say, here's your hours how do you want to use it and then a lot of this best practices come in where i say that sounds great but you will be out of hours prior to your goal date so unless you know you have more hours coming in mm -hmm. we might make another suggestion um, and that's similar to our on-demand models where we say we will track it and that's part of my job is to track your hour usage and saying you plan for <coughs> using 100 hours a week you're tracking 200 hours a week we need to sit down and either cap students or we need to reassess what we're looking at. So a big piece of my job is really tracking usage and making it that if your goal is to get to milestones, let's look at your hours, let's look at the milestone date and make that as practical as possible. Okay, thanks. One more. Go ahead. Um, this is gonna go out to all of the schools, though, right? All of the secondary schools. 10 schools? Mm -hmm. All secondary schools. Okay. <laughs> and then, I'm sorry, I said one more. Last one. Um, on the districts that you work with, because you said the cab is new, what's the year, amount of years with these other districts? So I would, I might have to have So to with Fulton, we've been, been there for seven years. Okay. And we just got into DeKalb, uh, two, three years for Cobb. Okay. Um, I forgot what other, what other districts you had. Atlanta there. Public Schools would be Atlanta two. Public Schools would be two years. Layton. And Clayton, we've been there roughly about five years. And Camden. Camden, we've been there for about four and a half to five years. Okay. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions. First one is, what is the breakdown <clears throat> for the uh, students using it in school versus um, work? Uh, in Newton or across the board? In Newton. In Newton, so we had 130 students doing the targeted at Clements, um, and then we had, we opened it to 120 students 
had the option to use it at Newton College. So the Newton College, they had to kind of opt in and choose <coughs> to. So that was the, the number breakdown of students. The 130 from Clements were obviously very structured. They were all on. Um, there was a couple that obviously left the school, but for the most part, they were structured. I think at Newton, I, I don't believe all 100 students end up engaging in it, but we probably had about 40 students who took advantage of it regularly in that time frame. And my next question probably from Ms. Warfield, <clears throat> because there's a great need for students to get this assistance. So my question is, are there any monies out there through grants or whatever to enable some of those students who can't afford the program to get some funds to buy hours? Grants that, you know, or any, yeah, because there are a number of students that need this assistance, and their parents maybe can't afford it to buy it. So, but right now we're we're buying. We're I know, but, <laughs> but my, my, I understand that. But my concern is, we need to reach a lot more students in the continuation of the program. That's my concern. Okay, and I definitely will look into okay um, grants. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Good stuff. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. And um, we'll leave all our information. So if you do have questions for myself or Gerald, um, you'll be able to reach us. And uh, if anything else, any other concerns, also I will be here afterwards if you would like to see what the actual platform looks like. I'd be happy to show you. OK, great. Thank, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you all. Okay, Ms. Fear, we have no old business. We'll move to new business, item A. In item A, the superintendent recommends the identified items be declared surplus <coughs> and disposed of per board policy. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, we'll move to item B. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Item B, the superintendent recommends the laptop computers and associated equipment needed for select schools be purchased from Dale Marketing LP of Round Rock, Texas, and Virtucom <laughs> of Norcross, Georgia. The total cost of the purchase is six thousand, I mean six hundred and seventy thousand one hundred and twelve dollars. <throat> Rationale. Individual schools are allowed the flexibility to use their allotted Title I funds in a way that supports and aligns with strategies identified in their Title I school-wide plan. Accordingly, all Title I eligible schools have chosen to invest in additional technology, which includes laptop, Chromebooks, accessories, and the charging um, carts. The school system will utilize a State of Georgia contract to procure the laptops, Chromebooks and accessories. The charging carts will be purchased utilizing a contract managed by National Buy Board, a national purchasing cooperative established in part by the National School Boards Association. The items and their associated car, um, costs are delineated in the tables that you have before you. Additionally, all 21 Title I eligible schools will each purchase two lock and charge Joey 30 charging cards. The approved funding source, um, the source will, the purchase of these items will come from the approved FY19 budget from the Title I Part I allocation. These purchases also are tied to goals, the strategic goal area one, which is student achievement and success, and strategic goal area four, which is organizational and operational effectiveness. And this concludes item B. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions? Having none, we'll move to item C. Good evening. The Good superintendent evening. recommends the purchase of virtual tutoring services from Focus Care Incorporated, DBA FEV Tutor Incorporated. The total cost of the purchase is $150,000. The school system will utilize a contract managed by the Allied States Cooperative, a national purchase, purchasing cooperative to procure the program. 
The rationale, in December of 2018, at a special called budget review meeting, the board approved a budget amendment request for additional curriculum and instructional funds for secondary mathematics support totaling $150,000. The Georgia mathematics standards are designed to assist students with achieving a balance between skills, concepts, and problem solving. These standards provide clear expectations for curriculum, instruction, assessment, and student work. Additionally, Georgia's mathematical standards emphasize real-world applications and rigorous concept development while maintaining a strong emphasis on procedural and computational skills. Through the standards, students are encouraged to evaluate both formal and informal mathematical arguments, make connections between mathematical topics and other disciplines, as well as reason using mathematical language to communicate ideas and information. Historically, Georgia's standardized test scores show that mathematics is an area of challenge for students. This math trend is also reflective in Newton County Schools' Georgia Milestone test results. In an effort to provide an additional layer of support within and beyond the walls of the traditional classroom, secondary schools will partner with FEV Tutor. FEV Tutor provides a personalized live one-to-one -one virtual tutorial experience 24 hours a day and seven days a week. The virtual tutorial experience can be delivered <coughs> anytime, any place through blended offerings such as during the school day program in the after school setting or extended in the nights and weekends. It is designed to support the individual needs of students and drive measured achievement gains. FEV Tutor will work closely with schools to analyze assessment data, examine student learning styles and explore core class resources as part of a collaborative process for developing high, highly targeted math tutoring plans that represent a natural extension of a student's math classroom. FEV Tutor assigns a dedicated educational program specialist, a former classroom teacher who serves as the primary contact and resource for school's partners to effectively implement customized tutoring. Through ongoing data sharing and collaboration, schools will work together with their EPS to adapt tutorial instruction to meet varying needs of student learners. This disbursement of funds will be based on the combination of, e of on, will be based on the combination of EOG and EOC course enrollment and CCRPI results. The funding source is approved FY19 budget from function 1000 object 300 and this meets strategic goal area and one student achievement and success in the supporting documentation. This concludes item C. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Having none, we'll move to item D. <coughs> Good evening again. The superintendent recommends the purchase of the childhood, I'm sorry, child help speak up, be safe curricula. The total cost of the purchase is $28,930. Rationale, on May 8, 2018, Georgia Governor Nathan Deal signed Senate Bill 401 into law, which includes an amendment based on model legislation commonly referred to as Aaron's Law. Appropriately, State Board Rule 160-4-2-.12, which addresses the state's comprehensive health and physical education program plan, was amended to mandate annual age-appropriate sexual abuse and assault awareness and prevention education in grades kindergarten through nine. Childhood, child help, speak up, be safe, is a primary prevention curriculum aimed at stopping and preventing child abuse and neglect. Instructors teach children how to identify unsafe situations, how to identify and talk to safe adults, and five key safety rules children can follow to help adults keep them safe. Also, the comprehensive program teaches students how to identify and build skills to resist all types of child abuse, including physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, as well as neglect, bullying, and cyberbullying. There are two lessons per grade level, and each lesson ranges from 30 to 45 minutes. Trained teachers from our school district will deliver the lessons. The purchase includes an annual license to the online platform with the full curriculum and two age-appropriate scripted lessons per grade level, all facilitator training, parent engagement pieces, teacher reinforcement activities, and all take-home items for the students, as well as resources for parents, teachers, facilitators, and school administrators. The Child Help Speak Up Be Safe curriculum is one that is top rated by Georgia's statewide human trafficking task force. The funding source 
approved in the FY19 general funds from function 1000, object 641, uh, ties to our goals, strategic goal area one, student achievement and success, strategic goal area three, culture, climate, and communication. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, just one quick one. The, mm -hmm. the, um, the trained teachers from our school district, mm -hmm. who, who do we already know? It, we are working um, through uh, the plan. Um, now we're trying to get the funding, but the plan, the tentative plan, is for the for us to run this through the PE classes at the elementary school because all students are enrolled in PE at this time. Um, for the middle schools, uh, tentatively, we are uh, looking to run it through our science classes because all of the students are enrolled in science at this time. For the ninth grade students, we are looking to run it through the health um, or PE because they would be in either of those courses at this juncture in the year. And actually, that is the model that the state is moving to the secondary team had um, someone from the state's um, PE program to come and uh, meet with them a few weeks ago. And um, they talked about this particular piece of legislation during that time. And so as they are writing um, the revision to the PE uh, uh, standards, um, which they're in the process of doing now, they're trying to weave it in through there. So we thought um, that it would be a natural fit for ninth grade there as well. Okay. So I know the last couple of years, in, in eighth, well, my eighth graders have taken high school physical mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. and health, and it's been discussed in their classroom actually since um, the other day was Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. I know my child's teacher had discussed it with Exactly. Her. And so the other day when we met, we talked about those particular students who would take the, the ninth grade course at eighth grade, so we would weave it um, through that course um, for them. Do we have signs or numbers posted? Because that's a part of the legislation. Exactly. Legislation All of that is part of the $28,000 um, purchase okay. price. They will so send um, posters purchase. for every classroom, and then every child will also get a bookmark um, to, you know, as well, and then there are a bevy of parent um, activities that they can do, you know, and, and introduce the children to at home. Okay, I've got one question. Sure. Um, Shaquille just touched on this about the kids in eighth grade who are taking the ninth mm -hmm. grade. What about those kids? Because I know during the summers they have the option of taking PE over exactly. between eighth and ninth grade or over the summer. Would is that in that statewide curriculum for that? We would run that as well. Dr. Everett, as a matter of fact, in, in our meeting the other day, she stepped out. She brought that same okay. point up um, because of her, I guess, her, because of her middle school background. Right. So we've addressed that then. So we okay. would offer that. Um, I think she said during the summer. Um, yeah, we took. Mm -hmm. That's what we talked about. Okay. Yeah, for the secondary part. So does it end in ninth grade? Like, what's, what was the mm -hmm. reasoning for not including? The, the law says um, oh, we have to law. do it kindergarten through ninth. Now, this particular curriculum um, is pre-K through 12, right. but the law stipulates grades K through nine. So that's why we stopped at ninth grade. Okay. And so they'll, so the students will, get, like, say, for instance, this kindergarten uh, group, they will get it next year in first grade, but it's all grade level specific. And the, um, can I, sure, go ahead. Is there a way we could get a link or something to see some sample lessons of the curriculum? Uh, yes, in the, it says here supporting um, d uh, documents, but if not, I'll have, um, I'll ask Ms. Guthrie to send it um, to you tomorrow. Um, everything, um, you know, that I have here that will have, um, um, that will show, and as a matter of fact, there, because I printed, there's a, I brought it with me just in case. Mm -hmm. I have a sample fifth grade curriculum um, here, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get that sent out to you tomorrow, or at least by the end of the week. We have right. leadership PLC tomorrow, so okay. at least by the end of the week, we'll get it to you. Great. I just, I guess I'm a little interested in the younger grades, how that looks. With exactly. And, and they mentioned that they don't use some of the words with the little children that they'll use with the, with the older children. Mm -hmm. And for the younger children, they're really depending a lot on the parents to, um, to work with them, you know, through it. And, and, and begin, again, there are only two lessons and they're really quick. So the, the, the heavy lifting, of course, they're still expecting to be done at home, um, but we're just trying to meet the letter of the law. So, um, but it is, it is um, I've, I've gone through um, the various grade levels and it is age appropriate, but I will send that okay. out to you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. <clears throat> Item E. Good evening, it's hard to believe it's time to do this again. Uh, the superintendent recommends that the proposed calendar of meeting dates of the Newton County Board of Education 
for January 2019 through January 2020 be approved. By Board Policy BCA, at the annual meeting of the Board, the Board is to establish the time, date, and place of its work sessions and monthly meetings for the calendar year. The proposed schedule is based on the schedule from previous years. <coughs> Excuse me. Traditionally, that means meetings on the second and third Tuesday of each month in months with a week-long break, such as February, April, October, November, and December. The Board would meet only once. The Board would also meet only once during the two summer break months of June and July. And then you should have attached the proposed schedule if you see any issues. If you let me know, I'd be happy to update the schedule for next week. Thank you. Item F, you need everyone to be prepared to vote for your board chair and vice chair uh, at our next meeting. Any discussions with anybody? I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm not volunteering, <laughs> I, I, but I have a plan. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Is the cost to that plan? <laughs> okay, item G. That's still um, to appoint the delegate. Delegate for the summer, summer yeah. conference. So. Um, unfortunately, my camp runs oh. that same week so yeah, I, will, oh, here we go I may not be able to go unless I can get somebody else to run the camp so I just have to take my name out of being there on that Friday sorry there goes we'll the plan. throw that out there you got to play it there goes the plan <laughs> <laughs> oh <man>. okay <clears throat> item H and we also will need a laser on for the uh that conference so y'all be prepared to nominate Person, you got a plan for that one? I got a plan. <laughs> okay, I don't mind. Good evening. Good evening. The superintendent recommends approval of the personnel items as outlined in executive session. Okay, I need a motion to approve the items. Uh, on item I, please. So moved. Motion by Mr. Bailey. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Coggins. Any discussions or concerns? Having none, all in favor, aye. Uh, all opposed, say. Motion carries. Any other matters of interest, uh, Ms. Coggins? Yeah. Mr. Johnson? No, sir, thank you. Mr. Bailey? Yes, sir. Ms. Baker? I don't have any. One thing? Just one thing? I might. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now, but I really don't have anything. Okay. I'm I mean, just hearsay, so I always felt things secure. Like, it is some schools that are doing some innovative things. I know um, I got an invite for everybody who's doing something innovative, so I think you got an invite mm -hmm. for that as well and stuff. So I'm just kind of waiting to see. <laughs> oh, great. Ms. Fear? Um, just a, a reminder that we will be observing Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday on Monday. Um, and our school system will be closed. Um, hopefully, everyone will consider that a day on instead of a day off and work in doing some community service. I know at Newton High School, we'll have um, our Project Aware team will open Newton High School and they've got a full day planned. Uh, so if you can make some time to get out there and just um, as a community member participate in the programming and as, as a board and district office staff just poke your head in to offer support um, that would be great thank you uh, how many want to stay to be the demo I'd like to look at it if, if it's an option yeah yeah okay so uh, we have we're gonna stay okay <laughs> so I need a motion to adjourn please so made. motion by Ms. Coggins do I have a second Second. Got second. second, Mr. Bailey. All in favor, aye. All right. All opposed, same motion. Can we stand adjourned? You know what? I'm doing a service project with them. I'm All partnering right. with them. Yeah. Good. Actually, I forgot about that. Uh, where? Very good. Good. So I'm doing. Um, You'll be there. Just, 
Yeah, I'll be here. Actually, I have to call agents back down or I could just have like a computer or whatever. Just, uh, just we, we can get, get short yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Would you ask? Thank you, sir. Would you have mm -hmm. Napoleon put the screen back down? You and see that? So they can you see, see the heavy? Ski fine. I know, I know. You came up. Now, what did you say? You didn't say Founders Day. What did you say? Oh, you didn't say Founders Day. Oh.